Hey folks, Edder from Brain Pulp TV, and it is, as of this recording, January 19th, 2019. It is the beginning of the pre-release weekend for the newest expansion from Magic the Gathering, Ravnica Allegiance. Now, every time Wizards of the Coast comes out with one of these new expansions, they create two new Planeswalker decks. Well, once they came out with five. We're not going to talk about that. Normally, they come out with two new Planeswalker decks, and this time is no exception. There is the Dovin Architect of Law Planeswalker deck, and the Domri City Smasher Planeswalker deck. Now, in this video, we're going to be opening up the Dovin Architect of Law Planeswalker deck. Now, if you've never seen one of these opening videos here before, we don't do a lot of opening videos, but we do each of the Planeswalker decks because we actually play the Planeswalker decks against each other in a show called The Mana Cave. We have a tournament that goes on through most of the year with these different Planeswalker decks to see who is going to reign supreme. Which means these Planeswalker decks do have sort of a special place in our heart here on the channel. So I'm going to open up the box, show you what you can expect to find in one of these Planeswalker deck boxes. Then I'm going to go through the deck itself. Every single card starting with the Planeswalker all the way down to the basic lands in it. I'll then talk about sort of an overview of the deck, how I see it, how I think it's supposed to run. Maybe some of the flaws within the deck because... When I talk about these Planeswalker decks, I'm going to be talking about them differently than I would a competitive deck or like a challenger deck type thing. These are entry-level products. They're meant for newer players or casual players. They're not meant to take the standard world by storm. So I do sort of look at them through that lens. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that some of these decks couldn't have been improved with just a little bit of extra care, in my opinion at least. And... Sadly, the one that we're going to start off with, Dovin, is no exception with that. Then at the end of this video, as sort of a cherry on top, I'm going to be opening up the two packs of Ravnica Allegiance that comes with the deck for you guys to check out. Okay, so now that I've gone over all that, we're ready to begin. Let's crack this sucker open and see what's inside. Alrighty. I do enjoy tearing open these Planeswalker deck boxes. So there's the packaging, and it gets set aside. And here is the Planeswalker, which I'm going to ever so gently try to remove from this and not damage it. There we go. Now, I didn't mention this before, but these are foil. The Planeswalkers that come with these are foil. I'm going to talk about Dovin in a little bit, but for now, let's continue on and show you what else is inside here. We've got the deck box. So this is a deck box, which now some people have mentioned that they've had problems getting sleeved cards in here. One of the things that people suggested was that it might be the penny sleeves, the like the ultra pro penny sleeves might be a bit too wide and uh, people aren't able to get sleeved cards in here. However, this deck is big enough to fit uh, dragon shield sleeves when you uh, sleeve up your deck. And as long as you're not trying to also sleeve up the cards that are in the pack and put them in here as well too, because it is just barely big enough to fit the deck when it's all sleeved up. So yes, you do have the deck box here with some wonderful artwork and Dovin's name on the side so he doesn't forget whose box this really is. You have the two packs of Ravnica Allegiance, which I will be opening up near the end of the video. You also have this fold-out here, which is in all the Planeswalker decks. Now, they've sort of changed the style of this. At one point, this used to have the deck list. Now, it's pretty much it's an advertisement, but it also talks a little bit, little bit about uh, Dovin here, his... I guess his dating profile or something, uh, as well as what a Planeswalker is, which is also useful information because it can be kind of confusing for new players. So yes, that is also another part of what's inside here. And then you have, of course, the deck itself. Now I'm going to tear open the deck and start talking about the cards, but there are a few other cards in here that I'm going to talk about first before I actually talk about the cards contained within the deck. Now, in previous Planeswalker decks, there used to be an insert that had a fold-out rules reference type card. Now they've replaced that with these smaller cards here. It talks about the various phases of your turn. There's an advertisement on the back of this one. And how to cast spells, as well as the ins and outs of attacking and blocking. This also talks about popular formats of magic, including standard, booster draft, and commander. However, on the back of this card is a vast improvement to the Planeswalker decks, which came about after Magic Arena was released in open beta. So what you have here is a card printed with a specific code for the Dovin Planeswalker deck, which will unlock this deck on Magic Arena. Now, my thumb is actually covering the code so that no one goes ahead and tries to 
take this code away from me because I do have to enter this in on Magic Arena. But yeah, these come with the Planeswalker decks. So you get a bit of extra value. You get the physical deck itself and you also get a digital version of the deck. And I'm really, really happy that they started including these with the Planeswalker decks. Alrighty, now that I'm done showing you guys the actual contents inside the box, let's start going through the deck itself. We're going to do this by first talking about the Planeswalker, then I'm going to go through the three other cards that are exclusive to the deck. After that, I'm going to be going through the cards first by creatures, then by non-creature spells, and I'll be doing that in order of converted mana cost, starting from the lowest, going on up to the highest. And to kick things off, we are going to be talking about Big Blue himself, Dovin, Architect of Law. For four, a white and a blue, you're going to get a five loyalty Planeswalker. Plus one ability is you gain two life and draw a card. Minus one ability, tap target creature. It doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. And then it's minus nine ultimate ability, which you will probably never ever get to use, is tap all permanents target opponent controls. That player skips their next untap step. Now, first off, a six-costed Planeswalker is obviously not super great. That's very standard, though, for a lot of the Planeswalker decks. Planeswalkers, they usually run in around five or six mana. The five loyalty isn't bad because it means it's going to stick around for a little while, hopefully, once it hits the board. The plus one ability of gaining two life and drawing card. Drawing card is obviously great. Life gain... I find life gain, unless you have a deck that is built around life gain, isn't as useful as you may think, just because usually if you need the extra life, if it's going that badly for you, a couple extra life is not going to make a huge difference. Sometimes it does, don't get me wrong, but most of the time it doesn't. Still, being able to draw a card is quite nice. Now, its second ability, the minus one ability, is very useful. Every Planeswalker that you're going to want to get on a board in any game ever, you're going to want it to have some sort of built-in way to try to protect itself. Tap target creature, it doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step, is a way of protecting the Planeswalker. Now, obviously, if the board is absolutely crazy by the time you cast Dovin, it's not going to make that big of a difference. But this is a half-decent ability when it comes to protecting itself. It's not as good as just straight-up removal, which is way better than this, but still, it is definitely something that can help protect Dovin and maybe allow him to stick around a little bit longer. Now, as for its ultimate ability, like I said before, it's highly unlikely you'll ever get a chance to actually use it because, I mean, this is going to take five turns past the point of when you get Dovin out there for you to be able to even have a chance of using this ability. Still, one thing to point out here, it is tap all permanents target opponent controls. So it is, it is a huge, huge advantage if you can ever get it to work. And I hope it does work for you because it will never work for me. And I really want to see someone out there have it happen for them. Okay, next up, let's talk about Dovin's Tutor card. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with the Planeswalker decks, each of them come with some sort of card which will allow you to call up your Planeswalker from the graveyard or the deck itself. There was an exception to this with the M19 Planeswalker decks, but for the most part, this has been a mainstay of all the other Planeswalker decks. Now, Dovin's Tutor card is Dovin's Dismissal. For two, a white and a blue, you get an instant. Put up to one target tapped creature on top of its owner's library. You may search your library and or graveyard for a card named Dovin Architect of Law, reveal it, put it into your hand. If you search your library this way, shuffle it. Now, this one is sort of a mixed bag when it comes to being the tutor card. First of all, it's, it's good because it is an instant speed spell. A bounce spell, which is instant speed, is always way better than sorcery speed because you can cast this on your opponent's end step. However, there is a condition, and it's that the, the creature has to be tapped. On the plus side, though, you're not bouncing it back to your opponent's hand, you're bouncing it back to the top of their library. This is going to deny them a new card draw the next turn. So, like I said, it's kind of a mixed bag. Now, the other thing to keep in mind as well, too, is that this costs four, but Dovin costs six. So you can cast this on turn four, or when you have four mana up, but when you bring Dovin to your hand, even though you can do it at your opponent's end step, and then get Dovin in for your next main phase, However, unless you already have a couple of extra mana on the board, you're not going to be able to cast Dovin right away because he's going to cost two more than this does. However, if you are able to do this when you already have six mana up, it's absolutely wonderful because you stack your hand with your Planeswalker and you'll be able to cast him right after you untap. So yeah, overall, not the worst Planeswalker tutor card ever, but also not the best. Oh yes, and one last thing to point out, you do get two copies of this in your deck. Next up, we have another one of the cards which is exclusive to this particular deck, and that is Elite Arrester. It is a one-drop creature, a 0-3 human soldier, and it has the ability of one and one blue, tap, tap target creature. 
Now, I do like these kind of creatures. I would like to have at least one power, but you can't have everything. So it is a 0-3 creature for one, which means it's it's basically going to be like a wall for you early on, sort of like holding off some early aggression from smaller creatures. But the main thing is, it's also a mana sink later on for one and a blue to be able to tap down your opponent's creatures. So one of the things you can do, for example, is allow your opponent to take their turn and then just prior to the combat phase, you can use this to tap down their biggest threat. So it can't swing in and beat your face. Now, you also get four copies of this in the deck. So you do have a good chance of having multiples of them on the board at any given time, which is great because it is a relatively low cost for you to be able to use its ability. So you can have several of these out and be able to constantly tap down your opponent's creatures. It's not as good as removal. Nothing's gonna be good as removal. It is a delay tactic and that can be useful as well too. So once again, not the best creature ever, not the worst. Now, continuing on with that theme of a creature not being the worst, but also not being the best, we have three copies of Dovin's Automaton. For four, you get a 3-3 artifact creature, Homunculus. As long as you control a Dovin Planeswalker, Dovin's Automaton gets plus two, plus two, and has Vigilance. Now, the problem is the Dovin in this particular deck costs six, which means you're not going to be able to bring this sucker's ability online until at least turn six. Now, the regular Dovin from the regular set of Ravnica Legions actually costs three. So that Planeswalker, that Dovin, would be actually pretty good with this particular card. But he's not in this deck, so unfortunately you have to make do with what you have. Okay, so that is it for all of the cards that are exclusive to the Planeswalker deck. Let's talk about the rest of the deck. These cards are all available in regular packs of Ravnica Allegiance. First up, we're going to go with the creatures. We've got three copies of Concordia Pegasus. For one and one white, we have a 1-3 flying Pegasus creature. Now this is a rather vanilla creature, but it is important to point out that it goes along with one of the main themes in this deck. There are two main themes in this deck, one of which is flying creatures. You're trying to fill your board with these smaller flying creatures and then swarm through the air and beat your opponent down to zero. The other sort of theme in this deck is delay tactics, being able to slow down your opponent from being able to swing it at you. You'll be able to do that with certain bounce spells like you saw with the tutor card, as well as cards like the Elite, which allow you to tap down your opponent's creatures. Now, obviously the Pegasus falls into the first category, which is flying creatures, but other than that, it's not super exciting. Moving on, we have another two drop. We have two copies of Prowling Caracal. For one and one white, you get a 3-1 cat creature. Pretty plain vanilla creature. Your best hope with this is you can get out early before your opponent has a decent blocker and you'll be able to swing in for some early damage. Most likely though, especially later in the game, this is gonna be just traded off against one of your opponent's creatures, but hopefully it'll be a favorable trade against something like a 3-3 or a 4-3 or something like that. Next up, we have our first three drop and we move back to the theme of flying creatures. We've got two copies of Senate Courier. For two and one blue, you get a 1-4 bird creature with flying. It also has pay one, one white. It gains vigilance until the end of turn. Very similar to the Pegasus, though not quite as vanilla because its ability to give itself vigilance allows it to be used as both an attacker and a blocker back to back. Moving right along, we get to another three drop. This is 10th District Veteran. You have one copy of it and it costs two and one white for a 2-3 human soldier. It is vigilance and whenever it attacks, untap another target creature you control. This can be useful because it's going to allow you to swing in with other creatures, maybe that have a decent amount of toughness, and at the same time untap them so you can then use them as blockers as well. It can also be super useful with something like the Elite, where you can use it to tap down one of your opponent's blockers, swing in with this, and then immediately untap it so then you can tap something down during your opponent's combat phase as well too. Next up, we're moving into the four drops now. We've got two copies of Spirit of the Spires. For three and a white, you get a 2-4 Spirit Creature with flying. Other creatures you control with flying get plus zero, plus one. So obviously this goes along still with that theme of flying and it's buffing up your other flying creatures as well too, allowing them to have a bit of better toughness, survive combat a little bit better, make them better blockers. The next creature we have is a five drop. It's also the first multicolored creature we've seen. It is Azorius Knight Arbiter. So for three, a blue and a white, you get a two five human knight with vigilance and it can't be blocked. So this is really great as a blocker and attacker. Can't be blocked. So it's gonna be able to swing in for two every single time it's on the board, but it's not tapping. So you're gonna be able to use its big butt of five to start blocking your opponent's creatures as well too. 
Another one of in the deck, also a five drop, is Chillbringer. For four and one blue, you have a three, three elemental. It's got flying, and when it enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls, it doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. So this creature definitely double dips. It is a flyer to go along with that strategy, but it's also something that's gonna be able to delay your opponent and tap down their creatures. Not just tap them down, but make it so they can't even untap it during their next untap step. Overall, it's a great creature. Sadly, only one of them in the deck. The next creature, however, we do get two of. It is also a five drop. It's also a three, three. It is Windstorm Drake. For four and one blue, you get a three, three Drake with flying. Other creatures you control with flying get plus one, plus zero. Now, obviously the best case scenario is you're able to get this on board at the same time as your Spirit of Spires is on the battlefield as well too. However, even on its own, it is still very, very useful because it's now gonna be giving all of your little tiny flyers that will hopefully still be on the board a bit of an attack bonus, which will hopefully mean the difference between winning and losing in the game. Okay, so that is it for all the creature spells in the deck. Let's move on now to the non-creature spells. First, we have three copies of this one drop. It is Arrester's Zeal. For one white, you get an instant. Target creature gets plus two, plus two into the end of turn. It also has Addendum, which is one of the new mechanics from this set. If you cast this spell during your main phase, that creature gains flying until the end of turn. So yeah, Addendum basically sort of a bonus if you decide to cast an instant as a sorcery. It always gives you a little something extra if you decide to do that. So you can use this spell on your opponent's turn still as an instant and maybe turn what would have been an unfavorable block into something which actually kills off one of your opponent's creatures or use it on your turn to allow one of your smaller creatures to then fly over the battlefield and smack your opponent in the head. And since it only costs one white, chances are you're gonna be able to have that mana up at pretty much any time during the game. Moving on, we have another instant also with addendum. This time it's a two drop though. We have Summary Judgment for one and one white. Summary Judgment deals three damage to target tapped creature. Addendum, if you cast the spell during your main phase, it deals five damage to that creature instead. So yeah, it's not, it's not a bad bit of removal. Unfortunately, it's conditional on the creature being tapped that you're targeting, but still three damage on your opponent's turn or five on yours can actually make a huge difference, especially if there is a particularly nasty creature on the board. The next spell we have another instant, once again with addendum, now into the three drop spot, we've got two copies of Code of Constraint. Target creature gets minus four, minus zero into the end of turn, draw a card. Addendum, if you cast this spell during your main phase, Tap that creature and it doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. So yeah, when cast on your turn, this could potentially clear the way for your attackers to swing in as well as tap down one of their bigger, beefier creatures and maybe give you a reprieve and stop them from attacking the next combat phase on your opponent's turn. Continuing on now with the theme of instant cards, which also have addendum, it is Unbreakable Formation. There's only one copy of this. It is a three drop, two and one white gets you this rare instant card. Creatures you control gain indestructible until the end of turn. Addendum, if you cast this spell during your main phase, put a plus one plus one counter on each of those creatures and they gain vigilance until the end of turn. It's a shame there's only one copy of this in the deck because at its worst, it makes your creatures indestructible during your opponent's attack phase. So you can be blocking with a bunch of indestructible creatures out of nowhere. At its best though, when you go to swing in or just before you go to swing in, your creatures are gonna be indestructible. They're gonna get plus one, plus one counters, and they're gonna be vigilant, which means you can still use them as blockers if that attack doesn't kill your opponent outright. Next, we have the only enchantment in the deck. It is another rare card. It's another one of, sadly, and it is another three drop. It is Verity Circle. For two and a blue, you get whenever a creature an opponent controls becomes tapped, if it isn't being declared as an attacker, you may draw a card. Pay four, one blue, tap target creature without flying. So yes, when you're able to use the ability to tap down a creature without flying, you get to draw a card. But it also means that when the Chillbringer comes into play and it taps down on a creature, you're able to draw a card. Same thing when the Elite Arresters are on the board and you're tapping down your opponent's creatures, you get to draw a card. And that can be a huge, huge benefit. If you're able to outdraw your opponent, especially if they're hellbent, and you're able to have answers in your hand and more threats on the board, that usually means that you're going to win. And it's one of the few advantages blue have when it comes to these Planeswalker decks. So yes, like with Unbreakable Formation, I wish there was more than just one copy of this in the deck because that would increase the odds of me being able to get this in my hand early on where it can make the most difference in a game. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed our brief little vacation away from Instance with Addendum because we're right back at it with Sphinx's Insight. For two, a blue and a white, you get an instant, draw two cards, and it has Addendum. If you cast this spell during your main phase, you gain two life. 
Okay, now this card epitomizes a pet peeve I have when it comes to the design of certain white blue cards. And that is the idea that we just need to simply tack on an extra white mana onto a spell and give someone two extra life and it's going to make them happy. I, if there's a deck that's built around life gain, once again, life gain is great, but I don't want to have to pay an extra white mana for a spell which should cost one less just to get two extra life. I'd rather have a card where you pay two and a blue and just draw two cards at instant speed. I would much prefer that in this deck. Now, if this card was pay two, a white and a blue, draw two cards or addendum, if you cast the spell from your main phase, one of your creatures gets plus two, plus two, that I would find way more useful. But this idea of just two life for one extra white, and they seem to tack it onto so many cards, it drives me nuts. Anyway, sorry to get off on a bit of a rant there. There is only one copy of this in the deck. It is card draw, so it is going to be useful regardless, but still, it's, it's just something that bothers me. However, that is it for the non-land cards in the deck. So let's quickly talk about the mana base in this deck, and then we can move on to opening up some packs. We've got four copies of Azorus Guildgate. We've got 12 basic planes and 10 basic islands. So there you go, folks. That is each and every card you will find in this deck. Now I'm going to give you my overall thoughts on the deck in just a second, as well as some of the things that kind of annoy me with the deck and some of the things I kind of like about the deck. But before I do that, let's crack open those packs I talked about before and see what we find inside. Okay, so here they are, the two packs of Ravnica Allegiance that came with the Dovin deck. We're going to crack open the one that actually has Dormy on the front first and see what we have inside. Now, normally, if I were doing pack openings... I would just read off the uncommons and the rare cards, but I'm going to read off at least the, the names of all the cards in this because let's savor it. We only have two packs, so let's savor it. And it is a new set. So some of these cards, even in common, might be new to you folks. Now, this is the Vizcopa Vampire. Next up, we have Arrester's Admonition. I have a horrible time pronouncing this one. I've, I've edited it out, but I went through about five different versions before I finally found the actual pronunciation for this. And even then, I might still be wrong. Who knows? Then we have Scorchmark, Axebane Beast, Dead Rebels, Watchful Giant, Final Payment, Ill-Gotten Inheritance, Burning Tree Vandal, our first uncommon is Enraged Ceratok. Then we have Ministrant of Obligation. Then we've got Cavalcade of Calamity. And our rare card in this first pack that I've ever opened up of Ravnica Allegiance is a split card. Oh, okay. It's Repudiate and Replicate. Repudiate is an instant counter target activated or triggered ability. And Replicate is... Sorcery, create a token that's a copy of target creature you control. So these split cards are interesting. They're different than some of the split cards in the past where you could cast both of them at the same time. You either choose one or the other, but they're very, very useful. And I've been playing a lot of Simic on Magic Arena, so kind of happy to get a copy of this. And we'll see what we have here. Oh, we've got a foil. We have a foil goblin gathering. So for two in red, you get a sorcery, create a number of 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens equal to two plus the number of cards named Goblin Gathering in your graveyard. And then last but not least, oh wait, there's there's a land. I didn't realize this as well too. The, the, uh, the land that they include in this is, I wonder if they're always going to be gates and not the basic land? Who knows? Uh, we have Azorus Guildgate. It is a land, enters the battlefield tapped. You can tap it for either white or blue. And now we have a token, a really, really cool looking black, white spirit token. Oh, by the way, if you folks are interested in Magic the Gathering style tokens, I do have a token of the month club where we create tokens exclusive to Brain Pulp TV. And you can have the option of having between one to 10 sent right to your door in the mail each and every month. So I'll provide a link that will take you to that. But for now, that's enough of that spiel. Okay, let's move on to the second pack and see what we find inside of that. Here we are, and you can do the same thing and read off just the, the title of each of the cards and then fully read off the rare card. We've got Fairy Duelist, always like creatures with flash. Gore Clan Wrecker, Impassioned Orator, Prying Eyes, Territorial Boar, Plague White, Blade Juggler, Watchful Giant, Final Payment. Ill-Gotten Inheritance. These sound familiar. I think we had a lot of them in the, the previous pack. 
Gruul Beastmaster is our first uncommon card. Senate Guildmage. I love the artwork on this card. Senate Guildmage. Fireblade Artist. And our rare card is Incubation Druid. I, I mentioned before, I've been playing a lot of Simic on Magic Arena. This is one of the cards that I have in uh, one of the decks I'm currently playing. For one of the green, it is an Elf Druid. It's a 0-2. Tap it to add one mana of any type that a land you control could produce. If Incubation Druid has a plus one, plus one counter on it, add three mana of that type instead. It's got pay three, two green, adapt three. Now adapt is, if this creature has no plus one, plus one counters on it, put three plus one, plus one counters on it. So obviously one of the ways to pump up its mana producing ability is to adapt it, but that won't be happening until you have five mana available. However, if you cast any spell on this that puts a plus one, plus one counter on it, you are going to be able to activate its add three mana of that type instead ability, which can be very, very useful and can be activated quite early on. So you don't have to adapt this in order to get the full value out of it. That said, though, if it does already have a single plus one, plus one counter on it, you won't be able to adapt it later on. Okay, so moving on, we have a land. It is a guild gate. I'm wondering now if, if there are only going to be guild gates in here. It's entirely possible. I'm not sure. We have Simic guild gate, which is perfect because once again, I've been playing a lot of Simic. You can tap it for either green or blue, but it enters the battlefield tapped. And then finally, we have a really cool looking frog lizard token. This set in particular, mostly because of Simic, there are some really great combinations of creature types in this, and frog lizard is one of those creature types. Alrighty, so now it's time for some final thoughts on the deck. First and foremost, I say this every time they come out with a blue planeswalker deck. Wizards, please just put in a couple counter spells. I don't even care if they're conditional counter spells, as long as you give blue one of the most powerful tools in its arsenal. I mean, look at it from this perspective. You wouldn't take burn away from a red deck. You wouldn't take straight up removal away from a black deck. Why do you take counter spells away from blue decks in these Planeswalker decks? I understand there can be some bad feels when someone gets a spell countered but it doesn't feel any better to have one of your creatures burned away or straight up murdered. So please, that is something that could easily make one of these blue decks way more powerful and at least compete with some of the stronger red, black, and green decks. But okay, if you don't want to give counter spells, then why didn't you at least include something like the Law Mages Bindings? For one, a white and a blue, you get a pacifism effect that also stops a creature from using its activated abilities. It's a common card as well too. I would have gladly traded just about any three common cards in this deck for three copies of that. So if you're not gonna include counter spells, at least include something like that, which is a bit more permanent than simply bouncing something back into someone's hand or their library, or simply tapping something down at a cost. Now overall, I actually, I don't mind this deck. I think this deck, <laughs> this deck I would like a lot more if I haven't seen what Domri's deck does as well too. Domri's deck is, in my mind, one of the more solid Planeswalker decks that have come out. And to somehow pair it up against this deck, which is a pseudo controlly but doesn't quite have the tools to be full on controlly deck, it's, it's gonna, I think it's gonna blow this deck away. Now, you are gonna get to see that deck in another opening, so definitely check that out. But yeah, it's just, I like the overall theme, the idea of flyers and, and, and being able to somewhat control your opponent to a certain degree, but I'm so sick of these half-hearted control attempts when it comes to Planeswalker decks, and, and there, there will always be that without the inclusion of counter spells or at least some better permanent removal, like I mentioned before, like the Law Mages Binding. Don't get me wrong, though. Nothing would make me happier than to be proven wrong on this point. But just based on the other Planeswalker decks that I've played that are similar to this, which are most of the ones that have either blue or white in them, I just, I don't think it's going to perform that well. Anyways, that's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think, though, when it comes to this deck, especially when it's compared to the Domri deck. However, that is it for this video. So thank you guys so much for watching, for doing everything you guys do to help support the channel, especially in the last year. It's been absolutely incredible, whether it's liking, subscribing, telling your friends about the channel. Your support has completely blown me away, and I can't thank you guys enough. So now with all that said, take care, everyone. Have a wonderful day, night, morning, evening, whatever it is, wherever you are. May all your pulls be mythics, and I'll see you all again very soon.